Coming up, we're covering one of the biggest songs from a legendary rock band, uh, and this song's been streamed over a billion times. It's one of the biggest songs from this band's catalog. Despite its popularity, though, it never actually charted on the Hot 100. It's because it wasn't released as a single. It finally did chart decades later, but there's a really funny story behind this one. Apparently, the band's producer did not want them to record it. So they had to, to lock him out of the studio, tell him not to come back until uh, they were done with the song. These guys were always button heads with this legendary producer. But somehow, despite the constant fighting, they managed to put together one of the strongest debut albums ever. This is just one of the stories of this song. And if you listen closely to this song, you're going to hear some of the best advice for a great life. It has even more meaning now since uh, this band's last founding member passed away, marking the end of an era, the last chapter to a dying genre in rock and roll. Great story coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know what? If you grew up on those old storybook records where it played that chime sound every time you were supposed to turn the page, you're going to dig this channel. Nonstop musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Check the bell so you always know when our latest interviews are coming out. We also have a Patreon. You got to check that out. There you're going to find more content. You can even become an honorary producer to help us curate this music history. It is so important. Got to keep rock and roll alive. So Leonard Skinner is one of the most commercially successful and critically acclaimed Southern rock bands of all time, or rock bands, period. Coming at you with a distinctive triple threat lead guitar sound. Their signature songs have become essential entries into the American rock canon. I mean, both Sweet Home Alabama and Freebird are irreplaceable anthems. We've already covered both of them on here. But while those two songs may be their biggest hits, this long-tenured band's catalog, it's so much deeper than that. Um, today, we're going to get into another mega hit that, although never released as a single, it's captured the heart and soul of listeners for decades. It's one of their most streamed songs. That song is Simple Man. So let's go back to the summer of 1964, Jacksonville, Florida. That's when and where founding members Ronnie Van Zant, Gary Rosington, and uh, Bob Burns met as teenagers. They were playing on rival baseball teams when they discovered that they all had a common desire to play music. You know, and they put together an impromptu jam session in the carport of the Burns family home. That performance inspired them to form a band. Now, Van Zant would take vocals, Rosington guitar, and Burns drums. Uh, from there, the lineup would grow and, of course, evolve over the years. Alan Collins on guitar and Larry Jungstrom on bass, they were the next to join. This young band would go through uh, a lot of different names trying to find the right one. Different points, they called themselves My Backyard, The Noble Five, Wildcats, and at one time, The One Percent. But in 1970, the group started calling itself Leonard Skinner, which was something of a backhanded compliment to the group's former gym teacher, a guy named Leonard Skinner. Uh, of course, an oft-told story in rock and roll. While the boys were attending Robert E. Lee High School, Skinner had a strict no long hair on boys policy. They never forgot it. So they actually immortalized him by misspelling his name, which of course morphed into the now familiar Leonard Skinner. Uh, touring through the South in the early 70s, Skinner distinguished themselves with a heavy hitting blues country rock guitar sound, uh, influenced by British rock acts like Rolling Stones and the Arbirds and Cream. In 1972, newcomer Leon Wilkinson took over on bass, and by that point, the band was growing in popularity. Uh, they became a top act on the Southern Circuit. That same year, former Blood, Sweat & Tears vocalist and keyboardist Al Cooper took notice. Cooper was getting into production, 
and he was scouting for new talent for his label, Sounds of the South. This is when Al caught his first Skinner show. Uh, he definitely liked what he saw. Said Cooper about it, the first night they played, I was instantly taken in by the quality of their material. By the third night, I asked if I could sit in on a song. I sat in on guitar. Now, it would take Al Cooper three months of pursuit, but it paid off. Or maybe I should say Cooper ended up paying. That's because uh, after three months, Ronnie called up Al at his home in need of a favor. Ronnie said, Al, sorry to call so late, but we're in deep trouble here. Someone broke into our van tonight and stole all our instruments and our amps. And without those, we cannot put food on our family's tables or pay our rent or get any gigs at all. Van Zant then asked for $5,000 to keep the band afloat, a lot of money back then. To his credit, Cooper did not hesitate. His response was, all I need is the address you want me to send it to, Ronnie, and you'll have it in two days. After a moment of silence, Ronnie said, Al, you just bought yourself a band for 5,000 bucks. Thanks from all of us. Now, soon after that, Al Cooper signed Leonard Skinner to their first record deal on Sounds of the South, and the band's debut album, pronounced Leonard Skinner, would follow shortly after that. But backing up just a little bit here, in the summer of 1971 and also during uh, 72, Leonard Skinner had actually already taken a shot at recording their first album. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, this would be the LP that was recorded at Muscle Shoals Sound Studio in Alabama. For all intents and purposes, it was supposed to be their debut album. However, it was shelved. The Muscle Shoals recordings would feature formative versions of future Skinner standards. Uh, if you haven't already heard it, you gotta hear it, very cool. Uh, this collection would later be released in part on 1978's Skinner's first and last record. Uh, then 20 years later, in its entirety on Skinner's first, the complete Muscle Shoals album. Uh, there were a total of 17 tracks. Five of those 17 would make it onto their official debut, pronounced Leonard Skinner in 73. Uh, those songs included Gimme Three Steps, Free Bird, and of course today's Simple Man. As we get into this, let me pause for a second and just mention our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. It's pretty simple. Best glasses for the lowest price the best selection for the lowest price, the best customer service, the best experience. Click on the info button right up here to get a special Professor of Rock deal. I tell you, after you try these frames, you'll be a lifer. Check it out today. Through the early 70s, there would also be some more lineup changes before pronounced Leonard Skinner was completed, actually. The official roster for the album included Van Zant, Rosington, Collins, and Burns, but also keyboardist Billy Powell, and then former Strawberry Alarm Clock guitarist Ed King, the late Ed King, uh, who replaced Leon Wilkinson on bass. But as the recording sessions neared uh, completion, Ronnie realized that they needed Ed King on guitar. So he met with Leon and convinced him to come back and play bass. Now those moves opened the way for Skinner's trademark three guitar army placing Alan Collins, Gary Rosington, and Ed King all on the front line. As for the recording of the album, the band actually entered the Studio One in Doraville, Georgia. That happened on March 26, 1973. There they taped 20 drafts of songs for Al Cooper to consider for the album. When Al heard the songs and heard the band in studio, he was once again blown away by how good this band was. And they weren't only good, they were incredibly disciplined. Under Ronnie's direction, Leonard Skinner was obsessed with perfecting every single song, note for note. They held to this belief that if they worked harder than everyone else, nothing could stop them from succeeding. Of course, Al Cooper had ideas to contribute as well. And really at this point, he had already put together an impressive legacy in the music business, not only with Blood, Sweat and Tears, but also by collaborating with musicians, iconic musicians like Bob Dylan and The Who and Jimi Hendrix and The Stones and B.B. King. How does it feel? Now I mention this because I really want to punctuate just what kind of talent Cooper had found in Leonard Skinner. He'd already had experience working with the best of the best. You know, he had plenty of wisdom to pass on to these guys. But Skinner, 
and in particular Ronnie Van Zant, were firm in the direction that they wanted this album to go. I mean, you can just imagine Cooper saying something like, well, when I was working with Jimi Hendrix, I did this or I did that. And Ronnie came back and said, nah, we're good. We're going to do it this way. These boys had uh, unreal confidence in themselves. That's what made them so fantastic. Now, apparently, Al Cooper and the band argued about just about everything. <laughs> From song selection to what key to play in. Uh, Cooper later said that Ronnie told the others, maybe once in 20 times Cooper would have a good idea, but I'll suffer the other 19 times because the 20th time will be something to make us sound a lot better. That's a good attitude to have. I don't know if it was arrogance, bullheadedness, or just pure genius, but Ronnie Van Zant knew exactly what he wanted from this band. It was his band. He wasn't one to compromise either. Even his wife Judy said that you know, Ronnie butted heads with everybody. But despite the arguments and the standoffs, Ronnie would learn a lot from the talented Al Cooper. And in the end, the disagreements only made this band that much stronger. Now, Skinner spent six weeks recording, pronounced Leonard Skinner, and upon its completion, it was nothing less than one of the greatest debut records ever. It immediately put this band on the map. It went to number 27 on the Billboard 200 from a, an unknown band. It eventually sold 2 million plus copies in the U.S. It also featured four signature Skinner songs. These classics included two singles, Give Me Three Steps and uh, Free Bird, of course, and two unforgettable album cuts, Tuesday's Gone and Simple Man. Like a leaf on a tree, cause he was All four have had tremendous lasting power, played all the time on radio. So it goes without saying, but Simple Man is a simple song, at least in terms of its message. That's exactly what makes it so fantastic. It's unpretentious, it's honest, it's truly humble, and it's completely true. The rich man's simple Man is a down-to-earth, mama-inspired blueprint for how to be a good human being. There's so many genuine pearls of wisdom in this classic song. They will Get to that in just a second. Simple Man actually had a really sad origin story, though. It came into being after both Ronnie Van Zant's grandmother and Gary Rosington's mother passed away. Sorting through the grieving process, the two bandmates got together in Ronnie's apartment to tell stories and just to share memories about these beloved women who had, had such an impact on their lives. From there, Ronnie started writing lyrics based on the advice that these two matriarchs had given them over the years. And then Rosington came up with a chord progression, and over the span of about an hour, they had this uh, song written. You know, said Gary about it, uh, Gary Rosington, we just put down in a song what our mama or grandma had said to us. They really wrote it. We just played it. Mama told me. However, as the band worked up Simple Man in rehearsal, uh, Al Cooper didn't think it was strong enough for the album. As you can imagine, that did not go over very well, such a personal song. So they argued about recording Simple Man with Cooper for weeks. Finally, they were just plum tuckered out and they just decided, we're gonna do this. One day, the band determined to record Simple Man with or without Al Cooper's help. They set out to do it. So to make sure that they wouldn't have any interruptions or any arguments anymore with Al Cooper, Ronnie Van Zant escorted Cooper outside to his car, and he gave him strict instructions to stay there until they'd finished recording the track. As Ed King recalled, he said, basically, Ronnie led Cooper over to his Bentley. He opened the door, told him to get in. After shutting the door, Ronnie stuck his head in through the window and said, when we're done cutting it, we'll call you. They basically locked him out of his own studio. Oh, Al 
Al Cooper, for his part, he remembered a little bit differently. He said that one night when he was uh, through with the session, you know, it was over, he packed up and he went home. But while he was gone, the band just stuck around and they sweet talked to one of the engineers into letting them record the song behind his back. Cooper had also explained that he didn't really have it out for the song. There were just a lot of great songs to choose from for the album. And at that time, Simple Man wasn't a personal favorite. However, when it was time to put the finishing touches on the song, you know, after they recorded initially, Al Cooper actually played the organ on it. And there are so many great stories about uh, Skinner recording that first album. Let's get into the lyrics for a minute on this one. Simple Man starts out setting up the scene, and really the whole song. Mama told me when I was young, come sit beside me, my only son. My only son. And listen closely to what I say, and if you do this, it'll help you some sunny day. The real takeaway here is the advice that uh, Mama gives from being a good man, to finding love, to remembering God. Mama has a lot to say, and it sounds like she knows what she's talking about. A good old Southern mom. Her list of good advice, it also includes taking your time, not living too fast, following your heart, and it includes a caution against lusting after the rich man's gold. Ultimately, she says, all that you need is already in your soul. So true. Oh, that I want for you, my son. And there's the chorus which sums up her wisdom so well. To be a simple kind of man, be something you love and understand. Oh, kind of when it's all said and done, Simple Man is an honest and reverent tribute to the women of generations past and mothers in the present. As the old saying goes, mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So, <laughs> probably should listen to this one a little closer. It's a perfect song for today. Yeah. You know, Simple Man, it meant a lot to Leonard Skinner, not only because of the great women in their lives, but also because it personified their collective personality. Said Alan Collins about it, we're just simple common people who are not trying to be big actors. And you know, with the recent passing of the last original member, founding member, to the South's most revered band, Mr. Gary Rosington, this song has even more meaning, even more affection. As I mentioned earlier, Simple Man wasn't released as a single, but it's become massively popular over time. In fact, it's Leonard Skinner's third most streamed song on Spotify. It comes in just behind Sweet Home Alabama and Freebird. It's incredible. I mean, if you're gonna get beat by two Skinner songs, yeah, those are the two. And Simple Man has an even bigger showing on YouTube. It has a combined total of roughly 800 million views, which I'm sure it'll be over a billion. Through the years, Simple Man has also turned up in several movies and TV shows, including Almost Famous. You love the Sopranos, Californication. Don't live too fast. Encounter, that 70s show, Gossip Girl, Caught, Cold Case, My Name is Earl, and Supernatural. Mama told a Simple Man has also been covered by quite a few artists. There's Tesla, the Allman Brothers Band, Garth Brooks, Shinedown, Kings of Leon, Sammy Hagar, the Deftones. And Slash featuring Miles Kennedy in The Conspirators. Finally, four decades after the fact, Simple Man made its mark on the U.S. charts. Actually reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot Rock and Alternative chart. Uh, that was thanks to an American Idol cover by Colin Stowe that went viral in uh, 2022. Oh. 
You know, Simple Man's a contender for Skinner's best song ever. Not to take anything away from Freebird or Sweet Home Alabama. I mean, we all know how exceptional those songs are. But Simple Man, it not only pays homage to what Leonard Skinner was all about, but it's also to the best that's in all of us. From that perspective, it really deserves to be in the conversation for one of Skinner's best work. Current frontman Johnny Van Zant discussed Simple Man in a track-by-track -track commentary in 2010. He said, well, that's a great song and something that I think we all live by. I think anybody out there needs to respect their mother and the words of their mother. It's mama talking to you in that song and I think it's probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite to do live. It's just a great song and that one stays in the set and the crowd always goes crazy on that one. End of quote. And you know what? It came out of a really special place. A tribute from Gary Rosington to his mother and a tribute from Ronnie Van Zandt to his grandmother. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to cover this song today, though, is Gary Rosington. The co-writer and, like I said, the last original member of Leonard Skinner. It's definitely the end of an era. A final chapter in the annals of the Southern Rock Manifesto, if you will. There will never be another Leonard Skinner. So if you will, join your heart with mine. Help me pay tribute to Gary Rossington, one of this band's incredible song creators. Gary passed away on March 5th, 2023. He was only 71. Now, the band wrote on Facebook, it is with our deepest sympathy and sadness that we have to advise that we lost our brother, friend, family member, songwriter and guitarist Gary Rossington. Uh, today, Gary is now with his Skinner brothers and family in heaven and playing it pretty like he always does. Here at Professor of Rock, we definitely want to express our condolences to his loved ones and thank him for his incredible contribution to the soundtrack of our lives. Thank you, Gary. We're going to miss you. In the lyric of Gary and Ronnie's beautiful composition to end on, boy, don't you worry, you'll find yourself. Follow your heart and nothing else, and you can do this if you try. All that I want for you, my son, is to be satisfied and be a simple kind of man. Oh, be something you love and understand. Leave us a comment, and leave us a comment about Leonard Skinner and Simple Man and Gary Rosington, one of the best out there. It's just so sad to lose him. Southern Rock, uh, tell me your thoughts and feelings on that, the future of the genre, and uh, share your memories about Gary Rosington and your tributes to him. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. <laughs>